Welcome back to Best Behaviour, an initiative brought to you by a coalition of B Corp companies and ESG Clarity to discuss better governance. I'm Natalie Kenway, Global Head of ESG Insights at ESG Clarity. And for this episode, I'm speaking to Cedric Durant, CEO at Montanaro, about how being a B Corp certified business helps companies and its employees. Thanks so much for your time today, Cedric. Thank you very much, Natalie. Very happy to be here. It's great to have you. Um, so can you explain, first of all, what is the relevance of your B Corp status to your clients? Well, first of all, I'd probably start by saying that in our experience, investors are increasingly looking to invest with um, sustainable managers and not just in sustainable products or, or, or sustainable funds. Um, and I, I think that's a very important distinction uh, at a time when investors are obviously increasingly wary of, of, of greenwashing risk. Um, and, and in my view, one of the easy ways to, to signal that as a business you are serious about sustainability is, is, is basically to start by, by changing your, your articles of association or, or whatever the equivalent is for, for your organization. Um, to basically ensure that you have a duty not simply towards your shareholders, uh, but towards all key stakeholders, so the planet, uh, society at large, uh, and of course your your, your staff as well. Um, and by doing that, um, you can really embed purpose and sustainability in in your business. And I I tend to think that having a defined purpose in an organisation is a is a really powerful thing. Uh, now, of course, I recognise that, you know. This is a key tenet of becoming a B Corp, but we have to also recognize that not every business can become a, a, a B Corp for practical reasons. Um, but what every business can do is amend their articles, uh, which is already a big step in, in, in the right direction. Um, and maybe I, I could just give you a little bit of, of more color on this by talking through our experience at, at Montanaro. We became a B Corp in 2019, uh, and we changed our articles uh, the following year in 2020. We tend to work with institutional investors, uh, both in the UK and in continental Europe. And for a growing number of these investors, the B Corp accreditation is, is the proof that as a manager, uh, we not only support the transition to uh, stakeholder capitalism, but we, we also want to play an active role in that transition. Um, and that's especially true of public pension funds in in um, in the UK, clearly, but also in Nordic countries and the Benelux and France, um, because in all these countries, these these, these investors are especially wary of, of, of greenwashing. Now, uh, the old, of course, not every single investor is is, is familiar with uh, with B Corp or you know the, the fact you can change these uh, your articles of association. Um, but we have noticed a, a very steady increase in the level of, of recognition over the, over the past couple of years. Thank you for adding colour to that. And yeah, just to highlight that point that um, while it'd be great to have everybody see a certified B Corp, it isn't practical for some businesses. However, they can change their articles of association and um, have that equivalent as well. Um, so how does being a B Corp help you when you're speaking to small and medium sized companies? There's a similar logic really at play because it gives us uh, the credibility we need to develop a constructive relationship with these companies. Um, uh, but maybe we should just take a, a quick step back to explain what what really you know what what the reason for that is. Mm -hmm. um, basically, with the growing focus on ESG uh, across the asset management industry, it's very clear that small and mid-sized companies in particular are under ever greater pressure to engage. Uh, they're basically getting more and more requests from investors, from data providers, from rating agencies, um, and it's difficult for them to, to meet these requests. They just lack the resource to, to satisfy all of these requests um, because in reality, they only they, they generally don't have a, a dedicated person um, for sustainability. So all these requests are handled uh, directly by the finance director, the, the chief executive, or, or the investor relations person, and that's that's you know they have day jobs as well, and 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 for them it's it's it, it can be it can be difficult to to meet all these um, all these demands. So so in our experience, the best way to establish and develop a dialogue with these companies is to actually give them something in return. Uh, 
um, and, and basically the idea is to be productive, it has to be a two-way relationship. And this is where your credibility as, a, as an asset manager comes in. Um, because once a company knows that you're going through the same sustainable transition process they are, well, they're much more likely to, to listen and, and engage. Um, and, and when these companies hear that sustainability is embedded in our own articles of association, well, it's a big source of comfort for them um, because they know, again, that we're going through that, that same journey they are. And, and it also means that we can help. Right. Well, you talked about a few different stakeholders there. What is the greatest benefit for amending the Articles Association for Montenaro staff? Yes, for the staff, there are benefits as well. Um, and I, I would say that the main benefit is that, um, you know, circling back to, to your first question, that it clarifies the purpose and the values of the business. So everyone at Montenaro understands what it is what it means to be a B Corps and what obligations our new articles of association uh, entail. Um, and so it, it makes it exciting for the team uh, to know that, you know, they're working for a business that is actually making change happen as opposed to just sort of sitting um, on the, on the sidelines. Um, so we support a number of charities, uh, which the team are, act, are now involved in. We, we even have bees on, on the roof of our office, right in the, in the heart of the city. Um, so we do a lot of lot of things like that, which which you know people uh, across the team really enjoy doing. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I, I also think it makes a very significant difference in practical terms um, because sometimes in some organisations sustainability can can be a second thought, and it can clash with other internal priorities. Um, but once you've amended your articles, um, you legally have to look after all your stakeholders and, and not just your shareholders. So sustainability suddenly takes a central role in the strategy of the business, um, and it helps um, it helps you set the, the the right priorities. Fantastic. Well, thank you for talking all through that. Um, it sounds like it, the it, there's lots of benefits to it, all the moving parts of the business, and they can all get involved as well, which is great. I'm so glad, glad we're having these conversations. Thanks for your time, Cedric. Thank you very much, Natalie.